see me. Skin. We love it. It's actually our second favorite organ, but we know very little about it. We have about one and a half meters square of it. We're just learning the anatomy of it in detail. There's the genomics of it, but we really don't understand it very well. It's become much more complicated very much more recently. Isn't he adorable? Thank you for not changing that slide. His parents celebrate this by bathing that skin, which we understand very little about, in some chemistry we understand very much less more about, less than, and it's actually destroying his microbiome. All these chemicals we, under, we really don't understand except they're toxic to the bacteria on his skin. What happened? Well, we started out as troops of hunter-gatherers where our microbiomes were essentially synchronized. Since then, we've had soap, cosmetics, antibiotics, changes in our diet, indoor plumbing, all sorts of other things, and there have been dramatic changes in our microbiome. We, we weren't paying attention. But someone was. Someone heard the noise. Some Horton here saw the who. And that Horton was <laughs> David here. And David did this by synchronizing his microbiome with the soil and then taking the step of not bathing for 12 years. <laughs> And since he's had his microbiome sequ sequence, we've now discovered that this organism, Nitrosimonis, it's an ammonia oxidizing bacteria, a gram negative, it's an autotroph. It doesn't burn carbon for fuel, it burns, it burns ammonia. And it's ubiquitous, found all over nature. It's non-pathogenic, they're slow growing, but they're very sensitive to surfactants, and they've got a cute little trick. Their cute little trick is they burn ammonia and they make nitrite, but more importantly, they make nitric oxide and it's an essential part of the nitrogen cycle on a global basis. It's a critical component. They take ammonia to nitrite and nitric oxide. They are everywhere doing that, absolutely everywhere. Ammonia occurs in nature. We find these organisms except for one place, on our skin, except for David. And the pathways that nitric oxide affects throughout the body are immense. They affect everything. It touches every metabolic process in every organism. And it does it through a whole variety of mechanisms. This was science in 1992. They actually got the Nobel Prize in 1998 for boner pills, for nitric oxide, boner pills. And every single one of these systems is affected by nitric oxide. And he's coined the term nitropenia. And what this is, is when we now no longer have nitric oxide, we have ammonia on our skin accumulating. In our sweat, in all our secretions, ammonia is up to five millimolar. But we're depleted in nitric oxide. The healthy state is, to restore these bacteria to the skin. If we try to restore the bacteria to the skin, they'll live in the sweat glands where the ammonia is produced, where it's immediately converted to nitrite and nitric oxide. Some of it acts locally, and some of it is resorbed into the vascular bundle and goes systemically. Mm. And it's got all sorts of places it can work. It can work topically, acne. These are things that we're exploring now. Eczema, psoriasis, all sorts of things. But there's a systemic component as well, because when we restore this organism, we restore the nitrogen balance. Thanks.